Now, before we start the video, I'd like to give you a little history on the idea of electronically controlled pneumatic brakes, otherwise known as ECP. The concept came about around 1991, and it was put into a test application in 1993 on the BN Beardstown line on a 65 car coal train. And they ran that train for two years and wrung out the system and uh, made changes and improvements. And in 1995, they had sufficient confidence in the system to equip 25 TTX five well intermodal cars. And they ran a intermodal train between Chicago and LA on numerous occasions with tremendous success. Now, the main difference between traditional air brakes and ECP brakes is that the brake pipe on the train is nothing more than a charging source for the air reservoirs. The automatic brake remains in release the entire time and the brake commands are sent by a box on the locomotive through a cable that runs from car to car throughout the entire train. Every car on the train applies simultaneously, instantaneously, which greatly reduces slack action. The same thing goes with a release. When a release is commanded, the head car and the rear car of the train release at almost exactly the same time, which is a tremendous reduction in brakes you wear and overall in train forces. Uh, there's many advantages to ECP. Constant reservoir charging is one of them. As soon as a brake command is issued and the brake cylinder reaches the desired pressure, those reservoirs start to recharge right away even though there's a brake application in effect. Your constant reservoir charging just eliminates the possibility of you using all your air up. Another tremendous advantage to ECP braking is the graduated release. Freight trains never had a graduated release capability before until now. Uh, with traditional braking, once the brakes were released, they were fully released. There was no releasing it in steps, but with ECP, on any kind of freight train, coal, grain, or intermodal, the engineer now has the ability to graduate a little bit of release, which is a tremendous and probably the biggest advantage to ECP braking. So with the instant application on every car at the train at the same time, instant releasing of the brakes at the same time, the graduated release capabilities, ECP braking is a huge improvement over the way we used to do it. So now that you know a little bit about the system, let's go for a ride. Keep in mind this was shot with a VHS camcorder. Uh, that was high tech back then. And I was in a working environment, so uh, no time to set up tripods or steady the shots. So the jerky video is just how it is when you're riding a freight train. All right, here we go. Hey, it's Halloween, 1996. That's gonna be home for the next couple of days, the Kootenay River. We're in Kansas City, and we're deadheading the biz car up to Wilmar to get on our grain train. Right now, it's just along for the ride. Here's our second unit, kind of a cool lash up, the 9548, and then red and silver, 907 on the point. Hey, good morning. It's actually 8.33 a.m. on 1 November. We're aboard the Kootenay River, and uh, this is pretty much the interior of the car. It's more of a work car than a business car. We're at Sioux City, Iowa, coming into the yard, and I figured we'll take the opportunity to show you the interior of the, the Kootenay River. Some testing equipment that uh, we don't use, but nonetheless is on the car. And let's walk on down the hall. Here's the dining room, dining area. And once again, this is kind of a work car, so it's not very fancy. Kind of a workbench back here. <laughs> anyway, around the curve a little further down as we bump into the wall, as we're looking through the viewfinder while we're walking. Here's the galley. 
and uh, kind of a crew uh, bedroom, upper berth, lower berth. Uh, those two seats fold into a bed. And here's the kitchen. Uh, the sink's too small. It's about the only complaint. Other than that, it's a nice galley, excellent stove and uh, hot plate, grill, a broiler up, a up on top, which has been used many times. Big, huge refrigerator. And uh, let's move on. Let's see, do we want to go back that way? No, let's go back and show you the nuts and bolts aspects of things. This is kind of like where the uh, car is operated from. We've got our uh, generator equipment over here. I was running on number one a while ago, but I just shut one down and uh, started up number two. Anyway, there's the controls for the two generators that are on board. It's a good car. They're very reliable generators. It's very cold. It's about 18 degrees outside. And there's a problem why we're having a hard time keeping the water temperature up. So that's why I was running both generators for a little while. And you might be able to see the ice in the little frozen water areas here. It's definitely very cold outside. And let's see, let's check out one of the main bedrooms. Here's uh there's one there's two of these types of bedrooms on the on the car. This one's currently not being used. There's the ladder to get up to the upper berth up there. And uh, of course there's a lower bed, very comfortable. Closet over there, mirrors. And in case you're wondering whose car this used to be, there you go, that should answer it for you. Former Frisco car. And it's kind of dark in here, but uh, I think you get the point. This is on all the shower stalls. There's three uh, shower stalls on the on the car, and each one has etched glass etched glass with the Frisco Herald on it. Pretty cool stuff. Nice car. I like it. It's not as fancy as uh, some of the other ones, but uh, it definitely does the job. Here's a kind of a bathroom all by itself. And it's kind of dark in here, but uh, again, there's the, the Frisco on the uh, shower, shower door. And then there's one in the third room, which we won't go into because I've got the windows covered up so that it's dark in there. There's no uh, no curtains to speak of on these rooms. Anyway, I will show you a little bit of it. Here's the third room. It's kind of dark in there because uh, I'm forced to sleep during the day sometimes, and uh, so I've got things over the windows to keep it somewhat dark. But uh, there's the third room, and there's a fourth kind of room that were that could be used as a as a bedroom. Those two seats down there fold into a bed, and there is an upper berth as well. But this is more of an equipment storage uh, area right now, but could be used as a, uh, a bedroom if necessary. And here's the solarium. Got a pair of Santa Fe GEs hauling us into town. Roger, got it. Be on the platform, except it's just too cold out there. <laughs> it is just freaking cold outside. Hopefully, uh, during uh, later in the trip, we'll be able to get out there and hang out. All right, it's uh, about 12, 15 p.m. on 3 November, 96. And we're finally on our grain train. Finally got on the train and we're actually heading west. With it, Eves is running pretty good. We're on the third unit of uh, our consist here. 
and uh, we're going to grab some footage from this third unit. Wonderful Montana scenery, which is actually not uh, too bad. I could, uh, I could handle it out here. This is uh, my kind of place. And there's home. That's looking back over the train, or at least back over the business car. It's the Kootenai River. Been home for the last week. Let's see what kind of amperage we're pulling here. About 300 amps, a little over 300 amps. Speeds at 45. from the biz car. And here's kind of what we're looking at as far as monitoring the train is concerned. We can watch every car in the train, see how it's performing. Every now and then we get a no response, which isn't all that uncommon. Focus up here a little bit, there we go. So the 417 doesn't seem to be talking at the moment. But otherwise, it looks like we've got a pretty happy train. near Glacier National Park and as you can probably hear we're struggling up the mountain got four units on the front one on the rear 105 loads of grain each load bringing in about a hundred tons so we're we're hauling about 15,000 tons up the mountain we're almost to the summit and then the tricky fun fun starts when we haul 15,000 tons down the mountain well, since uh, we last videotaped the power, they've added a brand new Dash 9 as our fourth unit. And this might be one of this unit's very first runs. I mean, this thing is just brand new. It smells like a new car. 981 is the unit. Doing 11 miles an hour, 800, almost 900 amps. We're in throttle number five. But anyway, this thing is clean. It's new. It's brand new. No cigarette ashes on the floor. This thing is brand new. Incredible stuff, folks. The train is running absolutely fantastic. We've got one car in there that's uh, not responding from time to time.
Now this looks kind of a, like a lengthy one here. Ah, here comes the end. The end is near. We're just west of Essex, Montana. We are departing Pasco, Washington. It's uh, 6.35 p.m. and we're leaving Pasco. Heading for Seattle. Good morning. It's 11:02 uh, a.m. 11:02 a.m. 6 November, and we have achieved the Pacific Northwest. Let's take a look at some of our brake equipment here. Got a set on the train. There's our CCU. And the manifold.
Well, I guess we're getting a little close to Seattle here. It's uh, 4.25 p.m. and uh, we're going by the Boeing plant. Wow. And here comes an eastbound pig train. There's home for the last nine or ten days. amazing. The engineer says it's not too often that you can see the rear of the train that you're on, but you sure can in this case. Is there always water in that? Yeah, it comes from right out of this, uh, I think a lot of it's irrigation water. All right, heading off into the sunrise.
Okay, from the flight deck. We're in the siding at a place called Adrian. And here's our electronic air brake uh, system in full operation. Kind of hard to read the screen because there are some reflections, but uh, we're at 100%. 25 pound reduction. 63 pounds on the brake cylinder. System's running fabulous. Marvelous. Fred's right up there. He's telling us we're pretty similar to what. Oh, we got a radio brake. Fred's not telling us jack shit right now. But anyway, we're in the meat for. We're in the hole for train number five here, so stand by.